Hi all, I have a completely mega complex and outrageous Mikhail Tile game to show you. It's actually so complex I'm kind of frightened. I have tried to prepare analysis notes for this game. Let's get some background bio first. Played in 1957, so that's three years before Mikhail Tile was become world chess champion. His opponent, Alexander Complance, is very interesting actually to introduce. He was Latvian. Uh, he was born in Riga. So same place as Tal. You know, Tal was known as a magician from Riga. So Alexander <laughs> Naftalovich Koblenz. Sorry, Alexander Naftalovich Koblenz. Uh, he was uh, Latvian. He won the Latvian championship in 1941. 45, 46, 49, and is best known as the trainer of Mikhail Tal, who he trained apparently from 1955 to 1979. That's extremely interesting. So this guy could have had a, a big impact on Tal becoming world chess champion. And note also that span, you know, even in 1973, I've been checking out FIDE rating lists. Tal's near the top of the FIDE rating lists. Tal had some uh, medical issues but he was up and down on, on on rating even after he was world champion he was still really up there so this was a long time trainer his writings include the interesting book study chess with Tao which has training exercises based on Tao's finest games I think you'll get a lot of mileage out of analyzing or trying to analyze this game just as a pet chess project Okay, let's have a go. Well, let's tr let's see. E4 from Mikhail Tal. We go into a Sicilian defense. Knight to 3 d6. We have the open Sicilian. Okay, knight c6. We're going to, well, the rector Rouser attack. So queen d2. Bishop e7. Casting queen side. Black castles. Knight b3, queen b6, and now f3. And actually, this this system with bishop e3 has become popular. Well, in recent years, a lot of grandmasters, English grandmasters, were using this system with bishop e3 usually instead of bishop on g5, but it's very similar. a6, we have g4, similar ideas to play with the g and h pawns here to try and open up lines against the black king. Rook d8. So as though there's an interest potentially in the center with d5 challenging the center more. Bishop e3 attacking the queen. The queen steps back. h4. Yes, it seems a very carnivorous position already. White's trying to just play for things like h5, g5, and maybe g6 to open up lines. Uh, we have here b5. And actually, here. Tal isn't afraid of knight h5 particularly. He plays, he goes and plays g5 without h5 first. We have knight d7. And now accelerating things. How would you accelerate the attack here? It's one of the more popular moves in live but as well. If I give you five seconds, what would you play with white to try and open up lines rapidly? <clears throat> Okay, g6 was played. And I've used this myself. I once beat a very high rated Fide player on uh, Louis Bet Masters, Marugan, who's about 24 20, with a similar pawn sack breakthrough, because then you can accelerate opening up the h file. And I later had bishop d4s with rook h8 and queen h6 ideas in, in my particular game. But I've used this very, it's a very, it's a very important tactical idea uh, to accelerate opening the h file in this sort of position. Uh, but the saner moves in live book, the saner move, well, less sacrificial is queen f2. And you can get things happening like this. This is apparently is being played a bit as well. But anyway, so we have this very sharp g6, hg, so we have h5. Black took this, rook takes h5, and already it's scary because if white's given another move, queen h2, and then there's a threat of rook h8 checkmate. From the moment tonight of six, 
uh, we have now rook h1 and again this idea of queen h2 to queen h8 needs to be parried there's at least there's a few ways black chose d5 which keeps eye on h2 there's also knight e5 here the knight can hop over there just in time to cover the h8 square for example this position but it's it's quite pleasant for white uh so anyway in this game we see this d5 so clearly queen h2 is ruled out e5 though a shocking reply in many respects one key thing to point out is queen takes e5 we play bishop f4 and actually trap the queen after bishop d3 that's pretty miserable and in fact this position is so good here say knight e4 this position uh again we can also go for a hack on h on h8 even if, if black will not win the queen win a piece say we're still crushing the black king here so that's out of the question so in the game actually after e5 it is possible to play it seems knight takes e5 and we have bishop f4 now note in this position there's always a tactical idea of knight d3 that one needs to be aware of uh, but in this position here uh, <clears throat> after bishop f4 we have bishop d6 so yeah this knight d3 looks scary but it it's not working here queen h2 knight d3 doesn't actually work here so that threatens mate this could could be sidestepped with king b1 so still threatening the mate on h8 so it doesn't matter about f4 here but bear this tactical idea in mind as a resource for black uh black here played king f8 now we have check and and this is where this tactical idea could come in handy black uh, maybe played less than optimal defensive move here he played actually knight g8 and this knight is subject to you know being pinned uh for some section of the game now but uh king e7 with this tactical idea in mind it's shown up here as a great resource for example this would be a terrible mistake because rook g8 and yes can you guess it what can black play here with devastating effect if i give you five seconds starting from now yeah knight d3 is a real killer here because bishop takes f4 is with check winning that poor queen end of game <clears throat> so that that means actually that that really kind of indicates it's evidence to indicate king e7 would have been a good try here and if white's forced to play the queen here say then again knight d3 check and if black gets that dark square bishop much of white's attack would be extinguished so that was the way to play it but uh okay knight g8 i mean that was the absolute best way to play it knight g8 rook h7 now to defend g7 f5 so laterally defending g7 but now things get extremely uh interesting we have bishop h6 so we have pins going both ways now on g7 the queen and the absolute pin on the diagonal uh well on the pawn moving forward not on the, no. <laughs> okay so we have rook d7 and now pressure is really built with bishop takes b5 here trying to get a couple of these major artillery guys the queen or the rook away from g7 but it turns out here that the queen is also not exceptionally placed you know because of knight g6 and black played rook f7 so knight g6 as a resource uh is is potentially uh possible to <coughs> celebrate yes uh so things are i would say uh mega complex here and i'm just going to stick with my notes <laughs> mostly because this is already mind-blowing enough this game without trying to improvise variations so uh if you have questions yeah youtube comments right so black here played rook f7 but 
if he took on b5 knight takes b5 knight g6 knight takes c7 this this variation after the smoke clears and there's a lot of smoke to clear i gotta say it turns out this is about equal exclamation mark okay <laughs> so anyway that was that was possible it wasn't as if black was getting you know mated by force so we have rook f7 instead rook g1 and that also of course covers now knight g6 we can zap that knight we have rook a7 so a triple battery defense uh knight d4 this is a really interesting move now actually it seems to have a lot of potential this knight joining forces uh, is having an influence over the whole kind of equation should we call this an equation it's like a mathematical equation on the chessboard all the all the, the defensive pieces and all the attacking pieces we've got f four attacking pieces four defenses but how does this disturb the equation this this knight which was just sleeping on b3 and entering the fray well it's things like knight takes f5 and knight d5 where it could disturb this mathematical equation of balance which is currently balanced it seems uh now black played knight g4 now let me show you how the equation is disturbed now knight, knight g4 is interesting but say rook b7 this is actually really strong knight takes f5 for example knight takes d5 here then we have rook takes g7 and you see things are disturbed that's just hopeless for black white breaks through on g7 so that's why yeah you can't have this knight takes d5 business uh it's it's pretty scary this position here where is the queen going it's kicked off the, the defensive second line so anyway so knight g4 was played and we have f takes g <clears throat> bishop e5 and this looks like an ingenious defense because it's kind of it looks like an ingenious idea the whole knight g4 at first because essentially bishop takes d4 is threatened as well as g takes h6 hitting the queen it looks entirely ingenious now the best move apparently for white is the tricky one uh white tried to keep a lock and key on the bishop maybe the wrong way tau played knight c6 maybe knight f3 was the absolute best because it gives the opportunity to play knight h4 in some lines for example taking we can take on e5 let's sort that one out but if not taking say say we take this one then knight h4 is actually really dangerous for black for example like this check the equation again the defensive and attacking equation is disturbed here why it's just breaking through he's absolutely just breaking through there so knight h4 would be the more accurate way of playing this um <clears throat> but anyway let's get back to the game sorry knight f3 that white played knight c6 still dangerous for black uh we have bishop takes c3 okay bishop e3 is played now and here uh white is now threatening bishop c5 check black tries to uh close that up with d4 if he plays let's have a look at bishop f6 just to see how the equation is disturbed here with bishop c5 check well we can take on g8 and it's kind of carnage time yeah that's a double check by the way <laughs> and uh mate <laughs> so okay so bishop e3 was played yeah so this for this bishop c5 um if yeah it's so it's really dangerous we have d4 and now we have the move 
rook h1 rook g h1 rather let's distinguish the rook because both can go to h1 and the threat here is can you see if i give you five seconds what is white threatening i'm trying to keep you involved and awake white is threatening what in this position if i give you five seconds to pause the video white is threatening queen takes g8 and rook h8 for example queen takes jet and note the king can't come to e7 and then rook h8 so that's the threat so here um okay let's get back here black played this move so after rook h1 black gave the king the f7 square and now we have uh the move bishop g5 now this is a, another slight inaccuracy i would say with the hindsight hindsight of our engines today in 2016 we can say now uh, that actually it's plus seven for white in this position with g takes f5 believe it or not and one of the reasons is that this simple tactical idea is reinforced in some of the lines if white can take regain that f7 square to threaten queen takes g8 example a takes f takes we've renewed the threat of queen takes g8 now because no we're covering e7 and f7 so queen takes g8 is on and if if we try and give black e7 then this is still crushing this position here is is absolutely crushing it's just end of game white's just breaking through uh, so that will be the way to play it, it seems. Uh, so the plus seven is on G takes F5 here. This was a critical moment. If instead of A takes B, let's say D takes E3, uh, F takes. We've also got this new resource, the F file to use as well here. So for example, G6, we have Rook F1 check demonstrating the F file. And this is absolutely crushing this position here because the bishops presenting <laughs> the rook which is pinning the queen <laughs> it's it's murderous so you can see uh, i hope you're going to be convinced that g takes f5 white had a really crushing position so this is a slight mistake now that uh, after rook d7 we have bishop g5 so a takes b5 and <laughs> things get visually mad to look at I mean, seriously, this becomes one of the maddest positions ever in <laughs> of Tao. One of the maddest of Tao's to look at visually. Because what is this? This is like becomes like a work of art. What what are these three pieces doing here? This could be in in the Tate Modern. This could be in an art exhibition. This chess position. It's 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 nuts. What, you know, <laughs> what is going on here? What is the meaning of this? But. Okay, there's there's things like rook f6 potentially introduced or or what exactly? Yeah, things like that because then it might be bishop h6 is after. Now black falters here. Yeah, he falters here. I mean, maybe he's trying to protect in instinctively the f6 square a bit more and trying to expose white's king. He played d3. The way to go here was actually bishop takes b2 check queen takes c6 and this position apparently black can live to tell the tell in this line by <laughs> if that was playing computer I, I he would be in big trouble because <laughs> the computer might be able to get the king out and live to tell the tell so for example perpetual check and yeah <laughs> okay but yeah who is gonna play like that only cautionary yeah let's not let's 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 forget about cautionary for a moment okay so uh yeah uh so that that was that was uh, an interesting way of um playing it so bishop g5 this d3 uh so we have this position sorry in this position d3 was played so apparently yeah bishop takes b2 queen takes c6 was was the way to go okay but we have d3 and white's back in the driving seat believe it or not um 
So we have B takes, not minding the seemingly scary D2 check because the king's blockading. And okay, here we have queen takes C6. So queen F3 looks pretty fatal, right? <laughs> because the pawn is also forming a mate net around white's king. So the immediate thing there is queen f3 being threatened. So white's got to run with checks now. Sometimes you just got to run with the checks because otherwise you're going to get mated. So we have rook f6 check. Yep, running with the checks. So if g takes h6, then check here is devastating because we run with the checks quite a lot. Yep, we can run with the checks like this and take here. Uh, so that would kind of... Uh, put a damper on this this final position puts a damper because then we can just take there safely yeah this this is safe for white and material up so let's just go so yeah i know this is crazy i know this is crazy so here now yeah, g takes uh, f6 is not possible so we have rook f7 the notes will be in the pgm by the way if you want to inspect them queen takes g7 check and here black resigned And honestly, I've only just touched the surface in, in, in the variations here in notes of this game. It's it's a gigantic project if you want to analyze this game. But I think I'm hoping I've touched on some of the more important variations and ideas. It really it's, it just becomes mind blowing, uh, Mikhail Tal. But this is, yeah, let's remember though, credit to Koblenz. He could have formed a major part in shaping Tal to become world chess champion, you know, three years later. He was one of the main trainers, it seems. You know, fellow Latvian, a, a true, you know, a Latvian champion in his hometown. His opponent here, Koblenz, he was, he was the guru of the town. Latvian champion, remember, 41, 45, 46, 49. What a razor sharp game between the two. Wow. <laughs> I've got to say, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I don't know what to feel about this game. I just feel terrified with the variations. I don't know about you guys. Okay, and amazed by the beauty at the same time. It's a mixture of feelings. Uh, okay, comments or questions and likes appreciated. Thanks very much.